speaking of the legislature, Bob, um, what does the state need to do to, to improve its laws? I mean, it's a mess here, obviously. It's the worst law. We can safely say New York has the worst law. It's not just the worst abuser. It is the worst law, because I've asked you to explain it to me, and, and I still don't quite understand all the convoluted provisions. Well, New York's uh, system of eminent domain, as Norm alluded to, is essentially deliberately designed to make it all but impossible for property owners to challenge uh, the use of eminent domain. Um, the way eminent domain works in most states is if the government wants to take your property through eminent domain, they file a piece of paper in court, and you show up in court, and you say, hey, you can't take my property because it's not blighted, and this isn't a public use, and blah, 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 go away. Uh, in New York, when the government decides it might possibly someday in the future maybe want to take your land through eminent domain, it's your job to sue them, uh, and to sue them within 30 days of their having made that announcement. Um, and until, uh, actually until the Institute for Justice got involved in the Brody litigation uh, that Christina mentioned earlier, the state didn't even have to tell you it had made that decision. Uh, they didn't say, hey, we're going to take your land, come and object if you want to. They said, we're going to take your land. Uh, and if you didn't hear that, that's just tough luck. Uh, all they had to do was publish a small legal notice in the legal notices section of a local newspaper uh, that didn't mention eminent domain, that didn't mention property owners by name, that didn't even mention specific properties. Uh, and it was your job to find that and within a month file your lawsuit. Uh, and can I get a show of hands who looks at the legal notices section in the newspapers? <laughs> Thank you, sir. You have to tell everyone else. <laughs> uh, and as Norm said, then even if you do, in the 30-day window, go and manage to challenge the use of eminent domain. New York State sends you directly to the appellate court, and you know, talking about discovery and deposition sounds very technical, but it ultimately boils down to this, that the Empire State Development Corporation uh, is going to, according to the Court of Appeals, should be allowed to take away Daniel's home because someone said his neighborhood is blighted. No one has to swear that his neighborhood is blighted. No one has to testify under oath that his neighborhood is blighted, and no one has to answer a single one of his questions about why they think it's blighted. They just say so, and they disappear into the wind, and there is nothing you can do to pin them down. So fundamentally, the system is broken procedurally, but the system is also broken substantively in the very idea of what blight is. Uh, I urge, if anyone has spare time, I urge you to look at the, the blight studies in any uh, potential condemnation in the state of New York. What constitutes blight uh, is essentially what constitutes how I know how to find my way home. Uh, a single piece of graffiti, uh, weeds in a nearby yard, uh, and of course uh, every New York developer's favorite condition, underutilization, uh, which means quite literally I can imagine something bigger there. <laughs> that is not blight. Uh, the, the, work, the proper word for what these properties are is not blighted, it is coveted. Uh, that what blighted means is, I want that, take it for me. <laughs> New York law is fundamentally broken. It's broken at a very deep level, and it's broken intentionally. Uh, let there be no mistake about that. It is the legislature's job to fix that, and it is the court's job to step up in the void and do what judges are supposed to do, and that's judge and take a serious look at what the facts are, take a serious look at what the underlying conditions are that lead to blight, and take a serious look at what's going on in the overall context, and actually exercise independent judgment. Uh, it, talking about eminent domain in New York always seems like a doubter, uh, because they, it, it is a, a terrible state. But at, at the Institute for Justice, and I know Norm has made a career of this as well, the uh, you, you never start out thinking you're going to win. You always start out with an uphill battle. You are always David. Uh, and the important thing to remember is that David actually won. Uh, and we have a big pile of rocks, and we're going to keep throwing them until one of them takes. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 <laughs>